My topic today would be, should we still perform robotic hepatectomy for gas skin tumor? I think this is a kind of tumor and uh, quite common in the baby tree and that account for about 40 to 60 percent of high level, uh, all the kind of cholangial carcinoma. Surgical treatment is difficult and uh, very often and a tumor of that uh, high level region will be associated with low receptability and also high operative mortality. And there will be a long list procedure and uh, quite complicated. At the end of the recession, we have to clear the lymph flow together with Pasomylus vascular reconstruction. And at the end, what seems to be extremely demanding for a uh, laparoscopic surgeon would be the bio and type anastomosis. Can this be performed with MAS? I think this is certainly yes. Technically feasible, and this is the first paper reported um, about a few years ago, five, six years ago, and there's also uh, reported by a uh, Japanese surgeon, uh, uh, Dr. Cho, and regarding how to use laparoscopy for hyalocholangeal carcinoma. But they, they commonly encounter the problem with bio and thyroid anastomosis. They can do it by laparoscopy in terms of recession, but final, final stage of the reconstruction has to be done by a uh, hybrid approach. And uh, this is the first case report um, back in 2010 and, uh, by uh, UIC group, able to uh, perform uh, extended white hemihepatectomy uh, for a patient with cholangeal carcinoma and uh, able to be discharged on day 11. And this is uh, recently published data and uh, based on the national database of Japan and uh, looking at all the laparoscopic hepatectomy. And I think, uh, for whatever hepatectomy associated with bowel duct, bowel duct recession and bio and anastomosis, the complication rate in terms of mortality is definitely higher than those with a patient as well. I think this is a major issue for most of the uh, liver surgeons, even though they are very keen to do uh, robotic, uh, the laparoscopic hepatectomy, they still encounter a bit of difficulty how to create the uh, bio and anastomosis. And uh, this is a stage recession, stage recession uh, performed in China and reported in 2014 and uh, ended up with a uh, quite good outcome. And looks pretty complicated, uh, employable robotic system, apart from the one reported by UIC. And there's also a concern about uh, possibility of post-site recurrence because uh, during a series of 60, uh, BOE cancer, and uh, out of that would be fertilized hyalocholangeal carcinoma, and there would be uh, two post-site recurrent occurs, which come for a 3.3%. And one of the two patients had primary hyalocholangeal carcinoma, and that given a figure of 2.6%. And this is sort of cases. Uh, I left a thing about how to do it by laparoscopy. And this is uh, type one, and basically after the recession, uh, there would be two, two holes, and tiny one, possessed a total duct, and I have to do two separate anosomes, and this is the first one, and then followed by the other one for the uh, common hepatic duct. I think it would be extremely demanding if you are not having uh, such um, dexterity with robotic instruments doing such demanding anosomosis in the level space. I think that also poses a lot of difficulty for uh, laparoscopic liver surgeon. Uh, this is post-operative cholangiogram showing you how those tiny duct and uh, with uh, intact anastomosis without any evidence of leakage. I think to me, this is a team approach. This is a team approach. I usually go for higher dissection, control all the vessels before I go for the parenchymal transection. Usually take about uh, three, four hours for the transaction and then another hour or so for the reconstruction. I think this is really uh, difficult in the sense that you have to uh, deal with the uh, recessional part and then uh, feel a bit tired and still have to carry on and perform the demanding steps of the surgery, which is reconstruction. Uh, I would like to show you a full video, and this is a type 3 a cast skin tumor I performed about a few months ago. And this is the uh, surgery. I'm so sorry I can't see anything from my, 
from my PowerPoint. <laughs> so I have to show you. And this is basically uh, initial step would be laparoscopy and uh, make sure there's no metastasis. And then subsequent would be the lymphatic dissections and clear all the lymphatic, identify the uh, what's up pink to the right side. After that would be the parenchymal transaction uh, after mobilization of white loop liver. And then we go for further dissection. Oh, I can see it now. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I can't see it now. And I think this is the uh, part, and you start to see the uh, middle hepatic wing over the right side. And uh, final steps is uh, mobilize the caudate loop out from the IVC, and then identify the whole length of the IVC, and uh, single out the uh, white hepatic wing, and then transect with a staple. I think the, the steps is rather standard and not really fascinating. And the subsequent step will be largely mobile a segment of the genome and bring it out. You can see, uh, because of slipping out of the uh, PDBD, I have to exchange it with a uh, guy Y. And so this is a guy Y sticking out. And I make a tiny hole and then do that uh, anastomosis. The bow duct on the left side, uh, yin chai pai duct is measuring about uh, six to seven millimeter, not, not too small compared to pancreatic anastomosis. And I do it uh, with the uh, monofilament interrupted. And I think that, that's the way how I do. And of course, we have to compete the JJ anastomosis as well. I can't see it anymore. Um, this is post op CT. You can see quite satisfactory hypertrophy of the left of liver, and you can also see the um, interhepatic wing and the, also the injuring capital joining the left side. Uh, there's a recently published data and, uh, by China, and this is a single center study, and uh, we're wearing 10 patients undergoing full robotic uh, recession of hyalocholangeal carcinoma, and uh, there would be one type 2, 4, type 3A, and 1, type 3B, and somehow in there would be 4, type 4 tumor. Presumably type 4 tumor would be contraindication for uh, recession. And there's no open conversion, but it seems that the, those group receiving robotic recession compare unfavorably to open recession in terms of morbidity, and that account for about 90% compared to uh, now 50% in uh, conventional open surgery. And no significant difference in terms of blood loss, mortality, and also post-operative length of stay. Major complication occur in three patients, and even one patient died after surgery on post-op day 18. And the hospital expenditure, once again, would be high for robotic group, and with statistical significance. Tumor recurrence fee recurrence was inferior in robotic group. And so the comment with that uh, review paper, even though long randomized nature uh, sort of comparison study and came that uh, surgery has been considered only for those highly selected uh, patients and the current result do not support continuous practice of robotic surgery for hyalocholangeal carcinoma until significant technical and instrumental refinements are demonstrated. And let's give you an overall figure of what we have done so far in an APO of uh, eight years uh, period of time, and there are altogether 272 robotic apatectomy in my series, and FH is about 200 minutes, and uh, conversion very small figure, just about 2%. 90 day mortality, and there would be one case, giving your figure 0.4, and morbidity is about 15%, and uh, hospital say it was 7.7 days, our lot recession achieved in 92. And uh, looking at that 90 day mortality, and uh, there's only one case, and that occurred about uh, seven, seven days after the index operation. And this is the group uh, 
that patient is basically a hyalocalangeal carcinoma. And they're all together about eight cases with uh, three cases of uh, type 3 tumor, and there would be another five cases would be largely type 1 going for extrahepatic recessions. And uh, this is the only mortality identified in my series and for all robotic hepatotomy. I think at the moment, and uh, because of that mortality, giving your figure 12.5, and uh, seems not too favorable for whatever series. And uh, once again, the hospital stay because of the uh, long stay is more than uh, three weeks. I think what I can draw with that limited data, even though robotics provide a very stable platform for better appreciation of anatomy, and also dexterity to overcome demanding dissection and anastomosis. And theoretically, it would be ideal, ideal for the management of hyalocalangeal carcinoma. But with all the available data in the literature and also my personal series, does not support routine robotic recessions and which demands more scrutiny on patient selection and also further technical improvement. I think that's the end of my presentation. Uh, now it's open for discussions, please.